What's up everybody, D-Man back. Welcome to a brand new video and today it's Monarch time. It's time to do another Monarch Legacy of Monsters Season 2 predictions video. In this one, we are going to be focusing today's search on Skull Island and what mysteries may be unearthed in Season 2. Welcome back to another Monarch Legacy of Monsters video, predictions video. If you've got any lingering thoughts or theories following Monarch Legacy of Monsters Season 1, please comment those down below and I may answer your questions or go over your thoughts and theories in the next Monarch Legacy of Monsters video. As I've said in all of these videos, I want to make this a regular thing. I don't know if I'll do it week to week. I'd like to kind of do it week to week for a while, at least until we've kind of run the course of all the questions and things we can explore, but I really loved the Legacy of Monsters show. I want to keep that fun continuing and so I want to keep doing this every once in a while with you guys So if you've got any thoughts or theories or questions about season 2 or about season 1 Comment those down below and we will tackle those in the next one For now, I do want to focus back in on Skull Island because I think it is going to play a really big role in season 2 Obviously Skull Island only has one scene in Monarch Legacy of Monsters season 1 It's the final scene of the final episode But it was such a massive reveal and the inclusion of King Kong is so cool and I think the filmmakers are are going to want to capitalize on that. I guess season one also had the scene at the beginning of the show, the flashback scene with Bill Rand and the Mother Longlegs, so I guess that counts as well. But in the present, we're back on Skull Island, and I think there's a lot to do there. In previous videos, I've talked about how characters like Houston Brooks and other Monarch alumni could return, and about how Houston Brooks realistically would be on Skull Island at the time this show is set, along with Eileen Andrews from Godzilla vs. Kong. I just don't think they're going to get Rebecca Hall back for season two. With them being on Skull Island, I do think we're going to see a little bit more with Kong. I don't think Kong's gonna like Apex. I don't think he's gonna like them on the island, but I don't think that's what he's up to at the end of the Legacy of Monsters Season 1 teaser. I don't think Kong's there to destroy the Apex facility or anything like that. I think he's simply just responding to the fact that a portal to Axis Mundi opened up. He's most likely just coming to check to see if a skull crawler has emerged or he's pissed off that he heard the noise of them tampering with an Axis Mundi portal. I don't think he's gonna want anything to do with the humans though, and I think Kong is gonna be kind of elusive in the next season. I don't think he's gonna hang around a ton. Theoretically, Monarch should be on the island. At this point in canon, Eileen Andrews has already started living on Skull Island as she moved into the outpost on Skull Island and has been there since 2014, according to Godzilla vs. Kong. At this point in the timeline as well, Nathan Lind would also be visiting the island and potentially living on it while developing his ideas of how to get into the Hollow Earth. It's even possible that Nathan Lind was inspired by Apex's successful test bringing somebody out of Axis Mundi to try and enter the Hollow Earth. I don't think there's a chance we're going to see those characters in Season 2. I'd say it's as low as a 0% chance we'll see either Nathan Lind or Eileen Andrews return, but they would be on the island, as Monarch Outpost 33 was established on Skull Island at some point after 2012, but before 2014 in canon. It is implied that Monarch has been on the island since 2012 and has built the facility there. We also know Monarch eventually establishes a second base, 236 on Skull Island, which is the massive biodome meant to protect Kong from Ghidorah's storm, which eventually moves in and destroys his island after Ghidorah sucks that outward storm that protects Skull Island inward. That hasn't happened yet, that happens in late 2019. Hopefully Legacy of Monsters remembers that, hopefully the showrunners, the producers, everybody remembers that and they don't fuck up the canon that bad as I'm sure they're going to. <laughs> there is a storm raging on Skull Island at the end of season one, I hope that's just for moody dramatic effect. Not only will it get really stale to spend a lot of time on Skull Island in the rain, but also they can't bring Ghidorah's storm in yet without deleting material they've already given us. It would also not make a ton of sense because we're told specifically in Godzilla vs. Kong that the storm on Skull Island is a result of man's actions with nature, and then they did a whole comic book to explain what that meant and said it was Ghidorah. It was when we woke up Ghidorah, we f***ed up the island. If they change that now, it's going to be really frustrating that they're going back on their word and again conflicting with their own canon. I do think we're going to spend more time on Skull Island. I think that Monarch will be there, or at least they really, really, really should be. Even if we don't see them, Apex should have an acknowledgement that Monarch is on the island 
island. They just have a separate outpost. I would love if in a season three of Legacy of Monsters, we see the creation of the Biodome, but that would have to be set after 2019, after King of the Monsters, which I don't think is where we're going to pick up. Finally, we arrive at what is Kong going to be up to, and I think he's going to be dealing with a new threat. I would expect or hope if the show wants to use Skull Island pretty well, a new threat should show up on Skull Island, something brought to the surface as a result of them tampering around with Axis Mundi. Maybe Apex wants to try and create a stable portal in and out from Earth to Axis Mundi, or maybe they're trying to find a way to bridge the gap to the Hollow Earth, and in turn they wind up awakening a new Titan who comes to the surface and is a big threat. It would be super cool to spend at least a couple episodes on Skull Island, and seeing more of the monsters on Skull Island would be really fantastic. Also, seeing the way that Monarch and Apex compete for the island, almost a war not fought physically, but completely ideologically between who does this island belong to, Monarch trying to protect the natural order of it while study it, and Apex basically trying to take it over with the intentions of exterminating the monsters, that would be a super interesting thing to see played up in Season 2, and seeing how their actions, both Monarch and Apex together, wind up accidentally unleashing a new threat could be fantastic. We could also see them take those early days steps towards creating the Biodome, just we can't see them start to develop it until after the storm moves in. I think that'd be a cool thing if the Biodome was a collaborative effort between Monarch and Apex eventually to try and save their own mistakes based on what they've done here. Personally, where I would love to see Season 2 go, the arc of Season 2 that I think would be phenomenal is if we saw that there is a threat there, something that battles Kong as a result of the humans waking it up so Kong can get into a fight with it in the first five episodes. Maybe it beats Kong in a fight, or maybe Kong just beats it up and scares it off, then it goes and fights Godzilla. But seeing a monster take on both King Kong and Godzilla separately would be super cool and would kind of create this destiny-like aura around these characters where they were always on a beeline towards each other. Their actions always indirectly related to each other. They were always headed in destiny towards one another, which eventually leads to Godzilla versus Kong. It could be really cool if Kong chases the thing off the island, beats it up so bad it has to get out of there, and then once it's into the open world, it can do some damage in some remote areas or areas we're not going to have the public be very aware of its presence. And this is where Godzilla steps in and has to take it on. Maybe Kong even chases it down into the Hollow Earth or Axis Mundi, and then Godzilla eventually has to go get the thing because it's coming towards his world next. Either way, I would love to see a threat take on both Kong and Godzilla in this show. It would be a really cool way to get a big action sequence in the first half of the season and a big action sequence in the second half of the season, which I think would tide over a lot more viewers than season one did. But what do you guys think? I would love to hear what your guys' theories are. How do you think Skull Island's going to play into season two? My biggest fear would be that we're going to pick up on Skull Island, get like one scene with Kong and be like, let's get out of this place. This is dangerous. And then it's just going to be developed in the background and they'll be like, Apex is working away on that monster island and we're not really going to talk about it other than that. That'd be my biggest fear. I would really hope that the show remembers all of the expanded canon that Legendary has started to build. I understand getting rid of Awakening. That totally makes sense to me. But now is your opportunity to show you actually do mean what you say and that there are real carryovers to the actions given to those expanded material pieces. That's the kind of stuff I'd really like to see. Monarch and Apex battling over the island, Kong caught in the middle of it and having to take on a threat that they've unearthed, and then eventually that threat getting out and Godzilla having to take it on himself. What do you guys think though? Where do you think all of this is going to play into season two? Who do you think the new threat's going to be? How do you think Godzilla and Kong are going to relate, if at all, in the new season? I'm very curious to hear everybody's thoughts, so please let me know down below. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. If you want to support the Patreon, you can use the link in the description below where you can get early access to content, access to the Discord community, and more. Thank you guys all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man out.